welcome to the India Idea Summit, our special coverage here as we capture the road ahead for India-U.S. relationships. Well, today started off with Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross. Secretary Ross making it clear uh, that India has imposed higher tariffs as well as non-tariff barriers that have made it uh, counterproductive for American companies to invest there, urging the Modi government to do much more to make the Indian economy open and to provide reciprocity when it comes to trade. Listen in to Secretary Ross. The U.S. is the least protectionist major country, and we have the trade deficit to prove it. Yet other countries are highly protectionist and have huge trade surpluses. U.S. has zero tariffs on 61 percent of the total value of our imports, and that involves more than 17,000 different categories of products. On thousands of additional products, our tariffs are lower than what other countries impose. For example, India's average applied tariff rate at 13.8 percent remains the highest of any major world economy. A few examples. It has a 60 percent tariff on autos and 150 percent on alcoholic beverages. On motorcycles, it's 50 percent, while ours is 2.4. It's bound tariff rates the maximum level which it could go to on products is much higher both than the actual tariff rate in many cases and certainly far higher than ours. For example, its bound tariffs on agricultural products average 113.5% and some are as high as 300%. High tariffs, non-tariff barriers, and unfair trade practices by our global trading partners have cost our nation entire industries, good-paying jobs, and lost innovation. <clears throat> These protectionist practices also hurt those countries themselves. They breed companies in places like India that have not become globally competitive and therefore ultimately are impeding their own local economies. I explained to the Prime Minister and others in the government while I was in New Delhi that the U.S. trade rep would hold off on its GSP decision until after the election so that it would not interfere with it but that the USTR substantive concerns need to be addressed in order to avoid negative decision. They were not addressed, unfortunately, and therefore because, to quote from the President's proclamation, India has not assured the U.S. that it will provide equitable and reasonable access to its market. President Trump therefore terminated India's GSP designation. U.S. industry is confronted by both tariff and non-tariff barriers, particularly including e-commerce rules, data localization restrictions, price controls on medical devices and pharmaceuticals, and tariffs on ICT products. These barriers, some of which unhappily are relatively new, impede the development of viable commercial relationships. For U.S. companies, we need more predictability, more transparency, and more consistency of regulation. Well, that was Wilbur Ross uh, promising to be back in India in the near future. Well. Ambassador Kenneth Juster, the U.S. ambassador to India, also highlighted the need for reciprocity when it comes to trade. 
also making it clear that while the defense ties have been strategic, economic ties also now need to be looked at from a strategic lens, suggesting that, uh, for instance, the offset contracts uh, that uh, India imposes on defense-related transactions are onerous, saying they're oppressive and need a review. Uh, a thought that was also shared by Pratyush Kumar of Boeing says uh, that the offsets need to be offset. Listen in to Ambassador Kenneth Joster. A lot of the focus over the years has been on the defense and security relationship. Uh, the economic relationship has grown from when I first began. Uh, in 2001, bilateral trade was about 21 billion to today it's over 140 billion. But I think there's enormous untapped potential. And we need to start thinking of the economic relationship in the same strategic way we think about the defense and security relationship. The world is undergoing enormous change right now. I like to say the tectonic plates of the international order are shifting. And one of those elements is the rise of China which is obviously going to be uh, influential throughout the world in terms of its global reach. But in the recent years, China has also become an increasingly difficult market for U.S. and other foreign companies who have found the type of laws and regime they operate under uh, increasingly oppressive. And so what you see is U.S. companies either not expanding their operations in China or in some cases, especially in the technology world, pulling out. This is an enormous strategic opportunity for India. These companies are going to go someplace else to establish their manufacturing bases and to put other countries embedded into the global supply chain. India, in my opinion, is a natural place because of its size, and you'd not only be serving the Indian market, but the regional and global market. But to do that, you have to have the right conditions to attract and retain investment. And I think there have been a lot of reforms over the years in India that have moved in that direction, but quite frankly, more needs to be done. We need to have a more predictable regulatory environment. We want to see investment grow, but when you're an investor, you look and see, and you do the numbers, how will this investment work over time? And you see what factors you have to mitigate. And if the regulatory environment is not predictable, that's a troublesome factor. And what you want is to attract investment to India and not for it to go to other countries in ASEAN, like Vietnam or Thailand or Indonesia, or even out of the region uh, entirely. You also have to ensure that while you have a rules-based system, the legal order operates efficiently and effectively in cases don't take quite as long as they might now. And I think you have to open up in terms of barriers to trade. Again, that's happened over the years. Obviously, there was a big opening in 1991. But we still see situations where companies don't establish operations in India because they cannot import some of the parts that go into their goods without high tariffs. So my own view is it's in India's interest to continue to open the economy and create the environment that will attract investment and trade and really make it a global hub for business and be fully integrated into the global supply chain. Defense co-production is another enormous area of opportunity. We do a certain amount of that right now. I think we can do more. As the ambassador said, we have to conclude the remaining Enabling agreements, we've got Comcasa signed last year. We have the BECA and the Industrial Security Agreement. We also have to, again, make sure that the conditions are such, whether it's through intellectual property right protection, low tariff rates, that parts can come in for this manufacturing and can be part of the global supply chain, uh, that we have the conditions that are conducive. And I, the, the other issue that I know is of concern to U.S. companies at times is that the offset program not be too oppressive and that there be credit given properly for offsets so that it can be done in a compatible way that makes sense for both partners to be continuing to produce in India and to be building up India's indigenous defense capabilities. Well, speaking of trade and investment, uh, Mahindra is a company that has invested in the U.S. In fact, they've invested in setting up a manufacturing facility in Michigan, the first automotive plant to come up in Michigan in about 25 years. I caught up with Pavan Goenka to talk about the company's aspirations for the U.S. and the road ahead. Mahindra is one of the 
first uh, Indian auto company that has made a significant investment here in the U.S. in Michigan. What's that experience been like uh, for you? Well, uh, even before the auto investment in Michigan, we have been in the tractor business. Mm. And in fact, last week, we completed 25 years of being here. Uh, U.S. is a very important market for us uh, and also a very difficult market mm. uh, it, because because to be able to sell a consumer product right. uh, requires a lot, including building the brand. Mm. And uh, I guess over the last 25 years, we have reasonably uh, sort of in the circles that mm. need to know, established Mahindra brand. And there are a lot of people who know uh, about who, who mm. Mahindra is and what they do. So it's been a good experience. Uh, we have had a good growth. We are today about Six hundred million dollar business, mm -hmm. uh, not counting our IT business, mm -hmm. which is about two billion. Uh, and and uh, uh, I guess the environment is uh, something that brings the best uh, out of us in terms of challenges that mm. we have in technology, in meeting regulation, in uh, doing the brand building mm. and setting up a whole distribution network. But what is the aspiration for the auto business? I mean, you talked a little bit about the tractor business and, and that is where you have seen significant uh, forward movement. But what about the auto business and, and the plans for the U.S.? So auto business, we have started very small uh, with a, a product called Roxor that we have launched about a year ago. This is an off-road product, not, not uh, on-road. Mm. Uh, and and uh, we have gotten pretty good response to that product because it's very unique uh, for the U.S. Uh, US market. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, based on that, we are now thinking bigger. Okay. Uh, a big deal is a, a major bid that we have made for a contract with the U.S. Postal Service mm -hmm. to, re to replace all the postal delivery vans uh, with, with a new product. And if you what get that... What product would that be? Well, it's a new product that has been designed right here okay. uh, in, in U.S. in our... Uh, engineering center in Detroit, hmm. uh, which will be manufactured in U.S. So we really are not, in a sense, exporting okay. uh, a CBU hmm. or almost CBU product hmm. from India. Hmm. Uh, in fact, Roxor is almost 50% local content. Okay. And uh, this USPS product will be about 60% local content. Okay. And not rest of it coming from India. Okay. Coming from India, from Mexico, from China and so on, just like any other auto company. Right. So when will you know whether you get this? Hopefully three to four months. Okay. Uh, we will know that. And once, uh, if you get that, uh, that uh, contract, then we will set up a brand new uh, assembly plant uh, in perhaps in Michigan. Okay. And then grow from there. Okay. Uh, you know, we just heard Secretary Ross talk about uh, the challenges that U.S. companies face in India. And he was very explicit that there are tariff barriers and there are non-tariff barriers as well. As an Indian company operating yeah. in the U.S., I mean, I would imagine that it's equally challenging, even though he said that, you know, in terms of tariffs, the U.S. is, is yeah. the least protectionist. So, so let, me, let me kind of take a step back, Serene. Uh, I've been here uh, two days or uh, three days now. And uh, in the conference uh, on the offlines and other meetings that I've had, I get a very positive feel mm. for the future of India, America trade and, and commerce, and also get very concerned yes. about the, the current environment. Mm. So few of the policies that have been talked about by government of India have probably not gone down well with American government mm. and American business. Mm. And there's a lot of perception about Indian trade barriers, okay. tariff and non-tariff, that I believe are overstated, Overdone. Yeah. overstated, mm. right? Uh, India is clearly uh, not advanced economically to the level that U.S. is, mm. and therefore to have some tariff barrier, uh, is or, or tariff, tariff difference, yeah. not barrier, yeah. is, is but reasonable. Right. Uh, U.S. is about 3% average, India is about 13% average. I won't consider that a very big difference, mm. right? There's some specific examples that get taken, which I think are getting out of proportion. Agriculture, for instance. Out of yes. proportion coverage. Yes. Uh, and India as a country does have to protect uh, its, uh, its industry, mm. its uh, uh, growth. Uh, and, and therefore, as an Indian business, I clearly will have bias. But the concern is that this uh, uh, sort of dissatisfaction or frustration mm. in U.S. business is growing. Mm. And I hear a lot of mumbling uh, here, mumbling here about uh, how it's unfair. Okay. okay? Uh, and if I was a U.S. business... But what specifically is unfair? Are they saying that, you know, we came in expecting a certain sort of yeah. landscape and then the rules have been changed midway? What, uh, what is I, the, I, I th I think, what I is think, the unfairness? Uh, what they are saying here and what Secretary Ross talked about, and in some sense what we are saying in India mm. is not much different. Mm. Okay, uh, what we're saying is we need a long-term regulatory and policy roadmap mm. which is transparent, which is predictable, and which is uh, sort of uh, steady state, doesn't mm. change too frequently.